So today, this is a very important video, I'm going to talk about the Senule diet. Um, I've made loads of videos where I talk about, oh, this is all about the Senule diet, but a lot of the time, what I'm saying here is Chris, not Senule. Um, for example, my video on sauerkraut, um, not much, well, uh, Senule was is just a point of departure because he says uh, you want uh, to take lactic acid bacteria. Um, but probably, he meant probably as a probiotic, but I think, so I talked about sauerkraut for, for an hour. So this is all about Senule and um, it will be my interpretation of Senule because that's inevitable. Um, okay, let me, uh, I don't want to blur the wrong too much. Um, so, what is uh, the Senule diet? Well, What is uh, the Senule diet? Well, Dr. Jean Senule was a French professor of medicine and he put 91 chronic diseases into remission. Okay, it's very easy to say glibly like that, 91 diseases into remission, chronic diseases into remission. But that's a big deal, yeah? I mean, uh, no, no other therapy has any, ever come anywhere near that, you know? The, 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 these are 91 diseases which, you know, according to orthodox medicine, they have mysterious origins, um, they give you drugs to treat them, and, it, you know, the drugs just make things worse. This really worked, okay? So, please pay attention if you've got a chronic disease, particularly autoimmune disease, but especially, um, and some of these diseases, if you start straight away, you can avoid the damage. Uh, for example, um, osteoarthritis. Very important to start the, the diet straight away because, you know, you can come to the diet years after you, you, you know, you first develop the disease. It's not going to reverse the damage. Yeah, it's, it will stop the disease progression, but it's not going to stop the damage. Yes, very important to save, to start the diet straight away with some of these diseases to, to avoid the damage that's going to be done. So this is really a big deal. So um, if there are any publishers watching this, please get in touch. Uh, leave, leave comments underneath and I will put you in touch with Anne Seignolet, uh the daughter of Dr. Jean Seignolet, okay, and um, she will, you know, the, uh, Dr. Seignolet died in 2003, so, um, sorry, he died in 2002. Uh, the last, this book, the last edition came out in 2003. Um, Yes, uh, so his, uh, his family uh, will sell you the, the rights, yeah, to publish this book in English. And um, I can tell you it's going to cost a lot of money to, to translate. I'm, uh, um, in, in a previous incarnation, I was a, a conference interpreter and a translator. So um, I could translate this, but uh, I couldn't afford to, you know, um, uh, it would cost you a lot of money for me to translate this uh, because I've got a business and I, you know, I can't take time off from the business to translate it. So, um, yeah, so let's see, let's see what other benefits there are apart from these 91 diseases put into remission. And we'll, we'll put the, I've translated uh, Dr. Senule's results tables and um, we'll, we'll put them up, we'll put them up on the screen, yeah, so you can see. Uh, so I'll slow down a little bit and uh, we'll, 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 put the, uh, we'll put the results tables up as I talk. Okay, so um, apart from putting these diseases into remission, these are other benefits, yeah. He found, he tracked, he, well, let me say, first of all, he had 2,500, this is over a period of 20 years, 2,565 patients altogether. 
2,300 of those patients improved. So, you know, in his results tables, you'll see he noted down whether they had a full remission or an 80-90% uh, remission, you know, greatly improved, or 50% improvement or failure, okay? So, 2,300 patients improved. So, though that would have included all those, you know, the 50% uh, remissions, uh, you know, full remissions, etc. And there were 1,631 complete remissions, okay? So that's over half of the patients had complete remissions on the diet, okay? So <clears throat> what other benefits are there on the diet? Well, he tracked his patients over 20 years, so he could, you know, he, he compared, uh, for example, the, his, his patients who had who developed cancer, who had heart attacks, who developed Alzheimer's, uh, very few, yeah, virtually none. He compared those with uh, uh, the statistics for the general population. And um, so, yeah, great for weight loss, the diet. It wasn't, in, wasn't originally intended for weight loss, but he found that, that, that it worked for that purpose. Uh, much improved mental alertness and poise. Uh, lowering of cholesterol, um, nobody on his diet got heart attacks and strokes or cancer or Alzheimer's, maybe one or two did, yeah, there's a big, this is a big cohort, 2,500, nearly 2,600 patients, yeah. So, uh, so who was Dr. Senyali? Well, he was, uh, I keep uh, calling him a professor of medicine. Um, that's my loose translation. What he was, he was a doctor, he originally qualified as a, as a doctor in uh, Montpellier in the south of France, okay, and um, he taught, he, um, he became an enseignant, enseignant chercheur, um, and uh, what does that mean? It means a researcher, teacher, okay. And there are two types of enseignants, chercheurs, uh, maître de conférence or professeur. And um, he was a maître de conférence, okay? So what do those enseignants, chercheurs do? How do they, first of all, how do, they, how do you become an enseignant, chercheur? Well, it carries a lot of prestige, yeah? So um, it's, uh, if there's a post vacant for, you know, one of these uh, posts, um, at a French university. It's advertised all over France. It's advertised at a national level that there's a, a vacancy, okay? Then they hold a competitive exam. It's called a concours, okay, concours. All the posts are filled by concours. So there's no old boys' networks in France, yeah? Uh, the, the people, university professors are there, um, you know, for, for, for good reasons, okay? So, um, yeah, so at the competitive exam, there's an um, uh, examining committee and they come, there. it's made up of other enseignants, chercheurs from all over France, so other maîtres de conférence, other professeurs come from all over France and they examine the candidates. And there's always a lot of candidates, yeah? So if you pass the concours, it uh, carries a lot of prestige. And um, so once you're in post, and the French call that, uh, the, the, well, that's, um, what do we call it in English? Um, you've got, um, yeah. Um, so the French call that un déboulon, déboulonnable. So impossible to get rid of you if you've become a maître de conférence, unless you do something really, really bad, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, yeah, you can't, you know, can't get rid of them. You can't pretend they're incompetent, get rid of them. Once they're in post, that's it. Okay. So, um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, so an enseignant, well, uh, what, what do they do? They teach for 128 hours a, a year. So 128 hours a year they have to teach, yeah? Now, the, the maître de conférence teach uh, undergraduates and all levels of students. They teach post, post, uh, postgraduates and undergraduates. The professor 
just teach uh, doctoral students, yeah? And um, apart from their 128 hours of teaching, they are supposed to carry out research, either uh, basic research or applied research. What they research is entirely up to them, okay? So Dr. Signaly um, decided, well, he, he researched a lot of things, yeah. He researched as a biologist um, at the, uh, the Centre Universitaire uh, de Montpellier, okay, at the uh, University Hospital in Montpellier. He was a, a biologist and a researcher, yeah. Uh, did a, he was a specialist in HLA, human leukocyte, human leukocyte antigens and um, he did his doctoral thesis on that where you know to become a doctor on did a doctoral thesis on blood um, so um, yeah he set up a, a laboratory um, to um, to match donors for transplants using um, their HLA uh, you know taste tested them for LHA uh, compatibility so that the, you know they didn't reject the transplant okay so um, now, yeah, so he started, he looked at, um, he wanted to look, he started to look at um, um, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, okay, for several reasons, uh, but he, uh, but one of the reasons was uh, there was a, there's a distinct uh, HLA pattern in uh, rheumatoid arthritis, so people with rheumatoid arthritis um, have, uh, you know, particularly, a particular uh, HLA um, set. Okay. So um, now he started his his re he started the diet. You know, started to treat his first patients with rheumatoid arthritis in 1983, I think. Um, his first edition of this book, L'alimentation la troisième médecine, which I translate as uh, nutrition, the third medicine. Uh, that came out in 1996. That was the first edition. And very quickly there were further editions. I think there were five, five further editions until this last one in 2003. Um, so where was I? Um, yes. So um, he started to, uh, and you'll see there was a, the, he, he wrote an article in The Lancet, I think, and we'll flash that up, about uh, rheumatoid arthritis and, uh, yeah, a diet or fasting for rheumatoid arthritis. That was a very early, early study, early article. And um, this was all, his research was all pre-internet, of course. Nowadays, as PubMed, it's so easy to look up studies on the internet on PubMed. Um, at that time, he relied on the university library in Mon um, Montpellier, and he said it was very well stocked. All the, you know, all the various um, uh, journals, specialist jour medicine journals. So he devoted um, a day or two uh, um, every week to reading those journals and um, gave himself time to think about them, okay? And he said it was like a fishing, it was like fishing expeditions. Uh, sometimes he'd come away empty-handed, sometimes he'd get a little fish, and sometimes he'd get a big fish, yeah? So all this helped to, to um, build the scaffolding for his theory, okay? For his theory about what caused all these chronic diseases, okay? So, um, what is the theory in a nutshell? Okay, well, this, this is 700 pages of tightly argued stuff, okay? Uh, very, it's, it's, um, it was written for the general public, but also for doctors and researchers, okay? And he said, you know, it's a bit, um, it's a bit probably hard going for you know a lay public to read uh, and possibly a bit too um, uh, possibly um, a little bit uh, you know f a little bit easy for easier for doctors and researchers maybe too easy um, so 
What is the, what is the, um, the theory in a nutshell? Well, in a nutshell it's this. Um, we modern, we, the, the, the modern, the, 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 our modern diet is composed of foods uh, which we are not designed to eat. You know, we haven't evolved to eat these foods. Uh, 10,000 years ago, we ate a completely different diet, okay? Uh, we didn't eat cow's milk, we didn't eat sheep's milk, we didn't e eat um, goat's milk. Uh, we didn't eat huge quantities of wheat. Um, we, and he, what's more, he says we didn't, and this it might be contentious, it's hard, to, it's hard to find evidence for this, but um, he thinks that we weren't cooking meat. We, we were eating meat raw. Meat and fish we were eating raw. And not cooked, and um, our, um, in the uh, you know ten thousand years ago, uh, we would have had a completely different um, uh, food. Would have to complain, you know, we would have eaten food by instinct. Okay, so if if we would have been nomads and we would have wandered from place to place, and uh, you know there would have been one kind of food in a particular place, and we would have gorged on that. And then, you know, we would have gorged on it so much that we, was, we, we would have been sick of it. And that, you know, then we would have moved on to another kind of food. And um, so, uh, you know, when we, uh, when we needed a food, it would taste delicious. When, you know, phys uh, physiologically, when we had a physiological need for that food, it would taste delicious. Uh, delicious, and then you know when we had we'd taken all the all the things we needed from that food, it would start to it would start to taste not so good. Okay, so cooking has completely altered that. Okay, so um, so what is Senulay's theory in a nutshell? In a nutshell, it's this. Um, we have not evolved to eat modern foods. Uh, 10,000 years ago, um, our Stone Age ancestors did not eat um, cow's milk, sheep's milk, or goat's milk. Um, and they didn't, uh, uh, they only ate uh, mother's milk, and, and then that was it. You know, the ones they were weaned never ate, ate any kind of uh, milk. Uh, didn't eat uh, wheat, you know, maybe some grains, but uncooked, yeah, just, just raw grains. Um, and Senulay thinks that we, we weren't cooking, although, although uh, fire, according to Senulay, was discovered, uh, I think, 400, how many years ago, yeah, 100,000 years ago or something, you know, fire was discovered. But it wasn't used uh, for cooking, um, and he believes that um, Stone Age, our Stone Age ancestors ate raw. Um, and this, you know, there's a, this is where um, it diverges from uh, the paleo diet. You know, you know, the paleo diet is based on a similar premise that uh, we should be, you know, for optimum health and to avoid disease, we should be eating uh, the way our Stone Age ancestors ate. Uh, but, uh, you know, the, we have this image of uh, cavemen sitting round a fire, you know, roasting their meat. Senulay uh, thinks that they were eating raw, they were eating, you know, meat and, uh, and fish raw. And um, so, um, and um, what this means is these foods, these uh, modern foods, are digestive enzymes can't break them down. Um, and um, so uh, these foods aren't broken down properly in our digestive process and we get, um, we get a putrefaction process in our intestine intestines and this the upper intestine yeah this uh, small intestine and this damages the uh, damages the enter the junctions between the enterocytes so the we um, 
we have our we haven't evolved the enzymes or the mucins. Uh, mucins are um, produced by uh, by the goblet cells uh, between the enterocytes to make a gel-like substance um, that protects the um, the intestinal wall uh, from bacteria and from damage, and it, it lubricates the intestine. Uh, we'll flash up a um, uh, uh, a movie of uh, what the intestines look like from a, an endoscope movie. We'll flash that up now. So, uh, the, there are also mucins, uh, there's also mucus in the, the membranes of the, the intestinal walls, the, 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 intest the cells of the intestinal wall. The cells of the intestinal wall are called enterocytes, and they're only one, the, the, the lining is only one cell thick. So thinner than rice paper, yeah. So um, Senulay thinks that that, that uh, process of putrefic putrefaction, that putrefaction of the of the, uh, f the undigested foods in our intestine, is damaging the the junctions between uh, the cell walls, the enterocytes, and that allows uh, macromolecules. Uh, um, peptides, bacterial peptides, little particles of food and particles of bacteria to pass through uh, the, between the, the, uh, the wall, the, the junctions of the, the enterocytes into our blood and that ends up in our tissues. Now what, uh, what happens then um, depends on our uh, genetic predisposition. So uh, some people will get uh, what he calls a clogging disease, uh, where the, the molecules just just uh, sit in the cells, all the spaces between the cells don't do much, but they they you know they they uh, they prevent the the cell or the tissue functioning you know at a hundred percent. Um, that's a clogging disease, and uh, for example, osteoarthritis, according to Senulay, is a clogging disease. Uh, another pathology is where the where the, the uh, molecules, the macromolecules, um, the the we the, there's an immune reaction to them. Our cell uh, our cells try to. Uh, try to get rid of them, and that's an autoimmune disease, uh, autoimmune reaction, and that's uh, then we get uh, these are what Senulay calls autoimmune diseases. Although he says that the true autoimmune diseases are extremely rare, he says this is a xenoimmune disease. It's not the body attacking itself. It's not the body attacking its own tissues. It's attacking those macromolecules in the in the body's tissues. It's uh, xenoimmune and. Uh, uh, so rheumatoid arthritis would be one of these uh, autoimmune diseases. And then there are e elimination diseases where uh, the emunctories, uh, the, the lungs, the skin, the liver, uh, the kidneys, these are emunctories uh, where the body can get rid of, um, of waste and um, uh, the, the body tries to get rid of these, you know, the, the, the eczema or asthma these are um, the skin is uh, an emunctory, the lungs are an emunctory, and the emunctories are trying to get rid of these these uh, macromolecules. So those are what Senele calls elimination diseases. Okay, so this is all great. This is all you know uh, theory, but you know this the the, the, the fact is that this you know uh, Senele put diseases into remission. So this theory must be right, yeah? Uh, there's a famous German professor who said, wer heilt hat recht, okay? So wer heilt hat recht, whoever heals must be right, okay? So uh, what is actually, so let's look at, um, the uh, what our ancestors were eating according to Eaton and Connor. Eaton and Connor did a famous, uh, wrote a famous paper, um, and uh, that's what the that um, 
that inspired the set, the paleo diet, yeah, uh, which is, uh, you know, a lot of people uh, eat the paleo diet and they eat huge amounts of meat, cooked meat, uh, which is, you know, according to Semule's theory, um, you know, uh, cooked meat is a problem. Okay, so this is what our paleo, the... Um, These are the uh, proportions of, uh, you know, basic foods that our paleo ancestors would have been eating. So uh, they would have eating, been eating 33% protein, according to Eaton and Connor, um, and compared to today we eat 11% protein, 75% um, of that would have been animal protein. And um, today, 62 of the 62% uh, animal, 62% of the 11% protein <laughs> would be animal. So, yeah, they were eating a lot less fat, 22%, or, and um, yeah, not so much animal fat, very lean, uh, very lean um, uh, meats they would have been eating, according to Eaton, Co Eaton and Connor. So, um, yeah, uh, we eat a lot more fat nowadays, 37. That's almost double the amount of fat we eat compared to our Paleolithic ancestors. Uh, and, of course, they would not have been eating, you know, sugars. Uh, they would not have been eating sucrose or lactose. 45% sugars, that would have been mainly things like honey or fruits. Um, lots of honey they would have eaten if they could get hold of it. Um, uh, compared to nowadays, 52% uh, of sugars we eat nowadays, 27% uh, of that is sucrose, 5% lactose, which is in milk, of course, and uh, our Stone Age ancestors would not have been eating milk. Uh, so, um, Senule used, um, quoted Eaton and Connor in his, uh, you know, in his book. So... Um, Yes, yeah, so our Stone Age ancestors, they would have been, this is what they would have been eating, according to Senile. Uh, 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 they would have been nomads, they would have been hunter-gatherers, um, also known as foragers. Uh, they would have been eating meat, fish, eggs, honey, wild cereals, uh, so, you know, grains they would have been eating just raw, wild vegetables and fruits, and only mother's milk and only in early infancy. Okay, so it's very hard to, uh, <laughs> I hope you'll bear with me, it's very hard to, uh, you know, to give you an idea of what's in this book. Like I say, it's 700 pages, yeah. So um, let's, let's see what, and really, please, publishers, um, get in touch, you know, put comments underneath uh, so we can publish this in English and people can read this in English, yeah very important, very important for the future. Um, in France, this is a big seller in France, it's being translated into Spanish, big seller in Spanish speaking com uh, countries. I think it's been translated into German now as well. So, yeah, so only as Anglo-Saxons have, you know, we don't have the benefit of being able to read this in, you know, in Senule's own words. Um, so let me show you what's actually in the book. Let me well try to give you an idea. So these are the contents, yeah. So this is the plan of the book. And there's a page which gives the, pa the plan according to Senele, and I've just translated it. So um, part one, you've got um, the key elements, yeah. The 91 diseases which benefit. And um, he says they all have multiple causes. Uh, but the two... Uh, the, the main cause is human enzymes and mucins have not evolved to cope with the modern diet. And this causes putrefaction in the intestines. And um, the enzyme, he talks about it, there's a chapter on enzymes, yeah. Now, enzymes, for example, uh, he gives the example of uh, sugar uh, when we make it into caramel. We, you know, we have enzymes which can uh, break down sugar, but if we, if we make it, in, turn it into car caramel, that the molecule is a cis 
the cysts form and the enzymes can't break it down properly. Uh, enzymes are catalysts and uh, they uh, speed up the pro uh, processes which could, you know, which could take years otherwise uh, they can do it, you know, the, the enzyme can make the process happen in seconds or milliseconds. Um, but um, our digestive enzymes aren't coping with these, uh, you know, with these, uh, with the modern diet. So this causes, you know, I, I've already talked about this. So this damages the junctions between the the uh, the cells of the intestines. Uh, talk, he talks about the difference between the Stone Age diet and the modern diet. In chapter six, he gives the principles of a healthy diet. Uh, part two, this is, uh, and this is mainly for publishers' benefits, for, for benefits of publisher. If a publisher wants to see a sample uh, of the book, if you go to my website, which is senuleplus.com, um, I've translated his, his section on cooking and its problems. So you will see, you know, you can see a, li a little... Um, uh, sample. Uh, if publishers want to, uh, you know, and other samples, I can translate other other parts of the book. In fact, um, you'll see there's a, I've made a video on um, his. Um, I've found all the the, the 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 bits in the book where he talks about bacteria. I've put them all together and I've translated them. And we've made a video about uh, bacteria according to Senule. So look at my playlist and you'll see that. So publishers, you might want, you know, the, the, it's more or less a, uh, a lit, um, you know, a straight translation. Uh, you know, the voiceover is a, more or less a straight translation of what Senule says. So, uh, yeah, publishers, I can, I can do other sample, you know, I can, I can do other samples for you if you need it, just to get an idea, yeah. So, um, part two is autoimmune pathology, uh, notions of Im immunology, immunology um, and various diseases uh, discussed in chapter 8 to 14. Um, it's very easy to say various diseases discussed in chapter 8 to 14. Very easy to say glibly like that, but Senule really goes into detail. Um, you know, he quotes all the studies. He gives, um, um, you know, a, 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 a really detailed uh, theory of the etiology of the particular disease, what really causes it, you know, all the different, and um, yeah, um, very interesting, uh, you know, for each disease, he talks about each disease. Um, absolutely fascinating, um, especially if you've, got, if you've got a particular disease, you can look it up and, wow, yeah. So all the studies, you know, he talks about all the different studies. Um, chapters 8 to 14, he talks about clogging pathology. Um, so autoimmune pathology, this would be something like, um, like um, rheumatoid, rheumatoid arthritis or multiple sclerosis, that would be immune pathology. Clogging pathology, and um, we'll, post, we'll uh, post up my translation of his results tables while I'm, you know, we'll... we'll post that up now. Um, clogging pathology, notions of chemistry and cellular, cellular physiology in chapters 15 to 16. And the theory of clogging pathology in chapter 17. So there he talks about, you know, what the, the clogging pathology. Um, Non-malignant pathologies, 18 to 21. And cancer, um, Senele thinks that cancer is a malignant clogging pathology, yeah? So he talks about cancer there. Uh, part four is elimination pathology. Uh, these are things like asthma and eczema again. Uh, again, he taught the theory in chapters 24, 25 to 28. Also in 25 to 28, diseases caused by wrong Wrong nu nutrition, yeah. Um, bah, bah, bah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, complex diseases. There are a couple of diseases which don't fit in exactly to his three classifications. 
uh, there's a couple of uh, diseases, um, pretty rare diseases, which are more than one pathology yeah, combined. And part five is uh, conclusions. Yeah? Uh, chapter one is an overarching theory to explain how the three different mechanisms can cause 91 diseases. Uh, 32 practical problems posed by the ancestral diet slip-ups and errors and effects. So, uh, yes, uh, so what is the, what exactly is the, ex the Senule diet? Well, you need to, on the Senule diet, and I will be showing you, I will be giving demonstrations of recipes how to follow the Senule diet, which I follow myself, okay? So, just to give you an example, just to give you an idea, I'm 68, okay? So, um, you might want to look at uh, Prince Charles or Donald Trump. They're the same age as me. Yeah? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so that's, this is the difference that the Senule diet makes, makes and being a health nut. Yeah. So, uh, the diet, eliminate all dairy. Uh, so that's all, you know, no cheese of any kind, no milk, no, no kind of, no dairy at all. Not even butter, yeah no butter. Uh, eliminate all grains except for quinoa, rice and buckwheat. Those are safe, okay, so we can eat those. And Senule advocates eating lots of rice. Uh, so there's no frying, no roasting, no basting, no grilling. And ideally uh, you want to eat um, meat and fish raw. Now, um, uh, one important thing here which Senule didn't mention, and this is, again, this is going to be Chris and not Senule. You need, if you eat, do eat meat or fish raw, you need to freeze it to kill any potential parasites. I don't think Senule knew about that. Um, uh, yeah, I eat steak tartare, I, uh, I eat steak raw. And um, I'll show you, you know, go to my playlist, you'll see me. Uh, making steak tartare. Um, very important to freeze your meat and fish if you're eating it raw. Uh, put it in a home freezer for at least 10 days. Yeah, I do it for two weeks just to be on the safe side. That will kill any potential parasites. So, um, yeah, lots of people, of course, people, of course, people, of course, can't, uh, uh, you know, find that the idea of eating meat or fish raw repulsive. Uh, and they can't do it. So you can you can steam. You know, steaming's allowed. Very uh, cooking at low temperature. So yeah, short cooking times. Steaming. Yeah, you're allowed to, to do steaming. Or, but it must be uh, any cooking you do must be under 110 degrees C or 230 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's allowed. No refined oils. Okay. Um, Oh, only extra virgin cold pressed oils, uh, so things like extra virgin olive oil, and um, I, I eat things like um, extra virgin walnut oil, um, pumpkin seed oil, flaxseed oil. All these kinds of oils get from your health food shop, yeah. Uh, no good going to the mo supermarket, they will be refined, and you don't want that stuff. It's been refined with solvents. Uh, very, very bad for your health. So, yes, I think that's, that's about it. So I will do a separate uh, video uh, and we will go into the Senule diet in detail, yeah? Uh, and uh, uh, my own comments on the Senule diet. Two things where I think Senule uh, went wrong. Um, number one, I've just talked about uh, freezing for parasites. He didn't, I don't think he knew about that. And I th he, he, so he sort of poo-pooed um, uh, the idea of parasites. He didn't think it was a big deal. Um, but I think it, it, it could be. And especially, of course, he was talking to a French audience, yeah? In, in the US, there are some very nasty parasites, especially in the South. So, uh, yeah, so, you know, uh, important, uh, that's an important thing to consider. Um, the other thing is, um, he said to eat um, 
sea salt, unrefined sea salt. Well, that's fine, but the problem with that is that um, uh, all our vegetables nowadays are iodine deficient, okay? Um, the, no, there's, no, uh, there's no iodine in the soil, no iodine in the vegetables, no iodine in the humans. And that's when you get things like goiters. And I, I, used to, I had a goiter for about 10 years, um, finally got rid of the bloody thing. Um, and I used Lugol's iodine. Uh, you know, I mean, when I, when I supplemented with Lugol's iodine, that finally got rid of it. So, um, if you're eating, so table salt is, um, has iodine added to it, so it's iodized. So table salt is iodized. Otherwise, if you, you know, if the salt wasn't iodized, um, you know, all, half the population would be walking around with goiters, especially in parts of the U.S. where there's absolutely no iodine in the soil, uh, called the, the goiter belt, yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, you know, um, they started to put iodine in salt, for, you know, particularly in the U.S. because of the, the goiter belt, you know, so that people had iodine so they, you know, their, their thyroids functioned properly. So if you just have sea salt, and this is a, this is a lot of thing that health nuts do, uh, you know, the, 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 you know, table salt is problematic, you know, there's things, horrible things added to it to make it, to make it pour uh, nicely and, uh, you know, blah, blah. But um, so, and it's got no minerals in it, of course, you know, sea salt has got, you know, minerals. Um, so yeah, eat sea salt, but if you know you must you must supplement with Lugol's iodine, and that's one thing that Senuli didn't didn't do. So I taught I I said at the beginning that I was gonna you know I was gonna talk pure Senuli, you know, and um, you know not <laughs> that I wasn't gonna you know it was gonna be pure Senuli, but I I was stressed this is you know the supplementing with iodine putting fish and meat and fish in the freezer to kill parasites, that is Chris, that's not, para, not senulae. So everything else I talked about is senulae. Okay, so um, go to my playlist, you will see how to make, you know, uh, delicious recipes to follow the senulae diet, very easy to follow. Um, and in particular, uh, you will see a video, a video of, you know, senulae legal comfort food. So, you know, so, you know, what is comfort food? Comfort food is things like uh, cheese on toast, lovely cheese on toast. Well, <laughs> you can't eat cheese and toast on the, on the Senulae diet. You know, you've got, you've got two things, well, three things wrong with cheese on toast. Number one, it's dairy. Number two, it's gluten and wheat. And number three, it's cooked. Uh, you've got myard, um, myard molecules, yeah. Um, and incidentally, I didn't talk about myard molecules. Myard molecules are the things you get when you eat, you cook um, meat or fish at very high temperature, and that makes myard molecules. And um, that's uh, that's what you know. That's one of the things we use to give food its flavour. Of course, myard molecules give you know give give us lovely flavours, but they do terrible damage. Um, the, the body can't break them down and says, uh, Senulae says, you know, the myard molecules, um, even bleach won't break them down, yeah, so how, how are they going to be broken down in the body? So, yeah, so we don't want to, you know, so we don't want to, to cook at high temperature, you know, we don't want to, to uh, you know, this, uh, we don't want to burn our meat. So yes, I will um, make another video on um, the Senulae diet in detail. Okay.